Okay. You saw me last week. You see me this week. Next week, you won't see me. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, we are going to the Philippines. And I think uh, God wants you to hear this message. Because uh, I prepared this for the Philippines. And it's an opportunity to share. My team members won't hear this message because they'll be busy ministering to the children and uh, also ministering in another church. So maybe this is where God is impressing upon your hearts and the hearts tonight, uh, to this morning, I spoke last night, this morning on this particular uh, uh, verse and also the story. <clears throat> okay, why don't, we, why don't we commit this time to the word, in a word of prayer? Father, we just want to thank you for the opportunity to share your word. Lord, the more opportunity, Lord, to share of your word to the other people, Lord, those who have not known you. Father, we pray that as you put this word in our hearts, that we will be able to share in some sort to the others who have not heard of you. Father, I pray, Lord, that as we share of your word, God, the seed will be planted, Lord. And Lord, that they will come to your knowledge in due time, Lord. Father, I pray for opportunities and I pray for abilities, Lord, to be able to speak, Lord, of your word. Father, I just want to thank you. And God, I ask that you prepare the people here to be able to receive your word, to be able to see your word, to be able to hear your word, to be able to keep their, your word in your hearts, Lord. And Father, that they have opportunity to share this particular word. Father, I just want to thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you think I lead a busy life? No, 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 no. This one is just that they fast-forwarded my, my uh, time to speak again. Okay, so I will be missing for a long time, I pray. <laughs> okay, today, this is what God has impressed upon me. Uh, and this message, when I was preparing this, I wasn't having in mind of speaking here. But when I have opportunity to speak here this morning, I told God, what else is there for the people here this morning? And there were just two particular words that God gave to me. And as I was asking God, Lord, be specific to the people here this morning. And the two words were this. Number one, the word is catalyst. All right? And number two, the word is ownership. So keep this in mind. Keep this in mind in your head. As we go along, and I bring along this particular word on catalyst and ownership, I will explain to you why. So Anna came this morning to pray about the lights. And JRX 8111 kept the lights on. <laughs> Just to confirm what Anna was actually speaking. Okay, I pray you have gone to turn off your lights because after that, we will have to pray for your car. Alright? So, uh, if you haven't, please do so. Okay? Now, the next thing is that we, we spoke about the foundations. We spoke on building. And this is the message here today. We are familiar with this parable. It was spoken on the Sermon on the Mount. It's about building your house. It refers to Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27. And what it spoke on was, you know, it is mentioning also in Luke chapter 6, verses 46 to 49. And I was, as I was praying on this particular parable itself, God reminded me of this verse. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 to 15. Let me read this to you. According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it, for no foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. 
If anyone's work which he has built on this endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. And God is reminding me to remind you that whatever you build your house on, whatever foundation you lay your house with, it is going to be tested. Now, the, whenever we talk about building the house, when we read this parable, we are always referring to you, yourself. Like, when I read it, it used to be me. What am I going to do for me? It has nothing to do with my wife. It has nothing to do with my kids. It has always been about me. But over the weekend, God just reminded me that when we build our house, we don't just build our house, my house. We build our house. We build and help each other in building their house. That's where the word catalyst comes about. Because the word catalyst is when I build my house, I encourage my wife, my kids, and the people around me to build the house the same way as I build it. If I build a bad house, then I guess they will build a bad house too. But if I build my house on the Word of God, based on Jesus Christ, then they too will build it. Now, what does this mean? How does this go about? We influence a group of people around us. We will never be an island by yourself. And you have your family too. And your family around you will also look at you. So when you start to build your house on God, you influence them. Likewise, especially so for parents to children. Now, your, your, your kids will always look to you. They may not understand what you're doing, but they will understand what they see. They see and they follow. And that's what God wants to do. God wants you to be a catalyst to those around. And one of the reasons, I'm, I'm quite glad how Christopher prayed for the mission team, was that when we go there, we go there and make the difference. We go there to impart unto them, to learn as much from them, but to impart, to, to make sure that as they see our lives grow, that they too can grow. And likewise with you and your family. <clears throat> this relates even to the younger ones because you will definitely grow older. Be rest assured, you will get older. And you will face everything that we have faced, are facing, you will face it. And we have learned from it how to face it. And if you don't learn of it from us, then you will be in trouble in the future. Because this is what God wants us to do as catalysts unto you. To be able to share with you, to be able to teach you, to be able to show you how to build that foundation. That is the first word on that catalyst. The second word that God gave was about ownership. Now, <clears throat> If you look at the house that I showed it earlier to you, if you were just renting it, you won't be too bothered how it looked. If the paint was peeling, the grass was long, you don't really care about it because it is not your house. As much as we teach and be a catalyst to another person, what God wants us to do is to be able to teach ownership. You own that house because as we go along you cannot say that I am going to stay with my parents forever parents take note they cannot stay with you forever at one point in time you have to tell him or her it is time for you to leave because they need to build their own house Okay, This in a spiritual sense because they need to grow up. They need to be their own person. 
to be able to build those foundations that God actually has taught us over the years. The reference that I'm reading is Matthew chapter 7, verses 22 to 27. It says about the wise and the foolish builders. So this is where we are looking at. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it has its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. As you look at these few verses, you will see that there are three different aspects that I would like to point to you. Number one, <clears throat> it's the environment. If you go back and look at that verse, it says here, the rain came down, verse 25, the rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against the house. Now, look at verse 27. It also says, the rain came down, the stream rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. It reads the same. The environment is one aspect. The second point is the builder's whether the builder was a wise man or a foolish man. And number three, it speaks on the foundation where the builders built the house on, whether it was on the rock or the sand. So I want to bring you to all three of these components in this parable. The first, com first component, it speaks about the environment. So you saw the verses I read to you again, that they were the same. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, that you may be the sons of your Father in heaven, for He makes His Son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. So if you tell me that you had a hard life, I will tell you that everybody has a hard life. If you tell me you had a hard, tough time, everybody has a tough time. The rain is not going to pick and like say, you know when I walk out, when it rains afterwards, that it won't rain on me. It will rain on all of you. Okay? Because the sun will shine on me. It won't happen. When it rains, it rains. All of us will get into the rain. So, what it speaks here is the environment is the same. So, if you think you're special, I'm sorry, you're not. You're just ordinary. And all of us will go through all of this. But what makes the difference in the environment is this. Look at the next sentence that I put. The advantage that we have is Jesus on our side. I will always remember this phrase that when Jesus is on my side, I'm majority. And I remind myself that when Jesus is on my side, I'm majority. And I win. So the environment doesn't change. All of us will face the same. All of us will go through the same difficulties. If you see somebody going through a difficulty, well, you'll be sure there's somebody else going through the same thing. But what makes the difference with us is that we have Jesus in our hearts. And with Jesus on our side, we are majority. And that makes the difference. Because now, we do not walk alone. We walk with someone. We walk with Jesus. And He guides us. He leads us. He speaks to us. He tells us what to do. He gives us direction. And that makes a difference. And if you have not had Jesus yet in your heart, maybe this morning is the day that you, you give yourself to Jesus and you give your life to Jesus because it makes that much difference. With Him, you are majority. So if anyone here who have not come to the knowledge of Christ, I will encourage you that at the end of service, when we have time to pray, just come forward. We will pray with you to be able to speak to you on the goodness of God. Okay? So, we have 
tackle the first thing, the environment doesn't change. <clears throat> the second aspect, we speak on the builders. Now, there is the wise and the foolish builder. So, uh, among us, we cannot see who is wise, who is foolish, but we can see the house they built. When the house, with the house they built, we know whether they are wise or they're foolish. So, like I said before, there are no renters. You build your own house. As individuals, you will have to build your own house. You are, there is no one who will be a sidewalk. You won't stay at a sidewalk. There is no sidewalk. All right? Because they want to park the car there. Okay, so there's no sidewalk for you to stay. So you either build your house or you don't build it at all. But you have no choice. You have to build a house. So when we, everyone puts down some sort of foundation. Now when we talk about a house, we are not talking of that physical house that you see piling down the foundations, trying to make sure that it is straight, trying to make sure it is uh, strong enough to hold how many stories you want to build. But the foundations that we are building our house upon are the foundations of character, lifestyle, our goals, our dreams, our behaviours. And this is what Jesus wants to affect you. Jesus is not interested how much money you have. Really, He's not interested how much money you have. You drive the car, whether it's faster or slower, it's still a car. You have a bigger house, a smaller house, it really doesn't matter. But what Jesus is interested in is to build your life, to build your character, to make sure your lifestyle is aligned with Him, to make sure your goals and your dreams are towards Him. Now, um, my wife and I, we have uh, four adults, adult kids now. I cannot say four kids, now. we have four adult children. And we are, we are glad that, I, I'm glad, I'm glad that my wife was focused on making sure that the four kids were built in their character. I'm not saying that she's not interested in the academic. She gave a simple solution. Go and see your father. So she was interested in making sure that they develop their character. They develop their lifestyle. They develop their goals, they developed their dreams. So, one of the things that my wife did was because she was a stay-at-home mom at that time, and so the kids would follow her everywhere. And one of the biggest things is that when you go to the car park, what do you do? Mothers with children, what do you do when you go to a car park? You pray for a car park. And you cannot pray for the car park far, 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 far away. You have to pray for the car park that is the best, nearest to the entrance and exit that you can bring all your kids down. And you know what happens? She started praying for the car park and subsequently when she goes to another car park, automatically the kids will pray for the car park. And God has been so faithful in providing the car park. And now, when I travel with my, uh, my kids they are older, so they drive now, you know, because now we sit back and relax. That is, that is our benefit now. They drive and then we keep talking to them now as they were talking to us and they will tell us, can you, can you talk so much? I'm driving. So when we come to the car park, you can hear, hear them whisper, in, whisper quietly. They're actually praying for a car park. You know, you influence the lifestyle and you make that change. Let me share, you, share with you a story. When I was 16 years old, uh, I remember this. I was in the, the church that I was attending in KL, <clears throat> and I was standing right behind there. And it was a, a, a service, and someone came up to speak. Uh, this guy was an engineer. He was 45 years old at the time, and he shared that he had known God uh, about five years back. So he had known God at 40 years old. And he's sharing his testimony at 45 years old. And he said this. Mind you, I was 16 years old standing behind there. And he was here, 45, and he said this. I wished that I had known God earlier. 
that means I wish I have known God before I was 40 years old so that I can lead my life knowing Him. And there I was standing behind and I told myself this. At 16 years old, I told myself this. I am not going to say that testimony. I am not going to go up there and say, how I wish I'd known God earlier. I said, no, 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 no. My testimony will sound like this. At 45 years old, I will come up here and say, oh boy, I am so glad that I knew Jesus when I was 16 years old. I knew Jesus when I was 14. I'm so glad I led my life knowing Him and seeing His goodness in my life ever since then. And I can tell you, God was faithful. At 45 years old, I had an opportunity to speak to a group of young people and I shared that. That was the first time I shared that I was so glad that I have known God, I would say, all my life. And this is something you have to make. You have to decide what your goals, what your dreams, what foundations you want to put. You must decide whether you believe God or not believe God. And trust God or not trust God. Because the challenges, the environment doesn't change. It is a matter whether or not you are going to be a wise builder or you are going to be a foolish leader, uh, builder. Jesus says, Jesus wants us to build our lives for the long haul rather than sacrifice ourselves for the pleasure of today. And that's what you see nowadays. Let's look at the foolish fellow, okay? Let's focus on the foolish fellow for a while. In the area of Palestine, there were low valleys and gullies that had been exposed to water from rain and storm. Later, I will bring to you and let you understand what it means, the rock and the sand. But just follow this story at the moment. During heavy rainfall, these became swollen rivers and washed away everything in their path. A foolish builder who builds his house without thinking about what kind of foundation there was, he might have liked the way the building looked, site looked. Perhaps he decided to ignore the warnings of the people who had experienced past floods. This is how... We live our lives if we do not live them according to the Word of God. We just do what feels right at the time. We do not listen to the warnings and we ignore God's wisdom. There are many people who build their lives on shifting sands. They may listen to sermons and Bible classes, but they do not live according to what the Bible says. I had opportunity to go to, uh, to Thailand during the tsunami uh, in 2004. And when I went there, I went to this particular island. We were looking for people whom we could treat. Uh, we were running a medical center thing, so we were looking for people who we could treat. And in this particular island, I saw there were trees on this side, there were trees on that side. But in between, I saw it was just empty. It was empty for a very long way. And I asked, asked the locals there, I said, you mean, why, why did they build this place for the landing, is it? For the aeroplane to land or something like that. And they told me, Sir, no, 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 no. Tsunami came. Tsunami washed everything away. So, it was, it's not this, this wide, you know. It is like, I would give it about a 200 meter width. But it is as far as I could see. And I can still see it in my head. And I couldn't believe it, how strong the water was. And, during that time, if you go to the desert, there will be these places where it doesn't rain for three years. But when the rain comes, it comes in huge gushes and it will wash away whatever is in line. If you are sitting here, the water won't wash you away. But if you are sitting right here in the aisle, the water will wash you away because this is the path of the least resistance and the water will just come gushing down. And this is what the foolish person the foolish builder built his house on. These are some verses that God says about the foolish person. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh and harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise commends knowledge, but the mouth of the fools pour out folly. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch of the evil and the good. The gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness is in bricks 
in it breaks the spirit. A fool despises his father's instruction, but whoever heeds reproof is prudent. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. So, you can walk beside me, all right? So, you will learn to be wiser, okay? <laughs> but choose, choose the right people to walk with. Because when you walk with the wise, you become wiser. Every prudent man acts with knowledge, but a fool flaunts his folly. So, the reason you are here this morning is so that I can impart this knowledge to you. So, you cannot give the excuse that you do not know. So, now you have knowledge of the wise, the foolish, and later on the rock and the sand. And this is what God says to you. The prudent sees danger and hides himself, but the simple go on and suffer for it. Let's look at the wise builder. <clears throat> the wise builder, on the other hand, carefully plans his house, he investigates the building site to make sure that it will sustain his building. He judges the soil and elevation to make sure that there are no flood hazards. He will listen to warnings from those who know the area. He builds with confidence and knows his building will last. We can live our lives with confidence when we live according to the Word of God. It is not just about listening or talking, but it is about doing. <clears throat> I'm not sure whether you remember when Anna was sharing and prayed, prayed just now. Uh, what impressed me when I was sitting there listening to her was I am not just building the house for myself, but I'm helping the others lay their foundations at the same time. <laughs> because he may not be able to lay the foundation on his own and I am helping the next person to put in the foundation and this is what God wants us to do. Because I already told you, we don't build only our own house. We work as a catalyst to help the others build their house. And to know that we don't build their house and tell them, hey, that's my house. No. We build their house and tell him, tell him or her that that's your house. They have ownership of that particular house. So we help them, we guide them, we teach them, we walk with them. Uh, I've already read this verse to you in the beginning about how God will test it. It says here in Psalms, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord is the word of God. And in this law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. This is the promise of God that you will prosper because you remain in Him. You build according to His guidelines and according to His blueprints. In First Timothy, command those who are rich, uh, listen to this, you cannot bring your money it really doesn't matter. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant or not to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to, be, to do good, to be rich in good deeds, to be generous, to be willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. We don't just hear what we hear today. What we hear of the word, we have to do. So now you cannot plead in ignorance. You cannot say, I don't know. Because you are here today, you have heard it. So the responsibility now falls on you to live it. In James, it says, do not merely listen in the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom 
and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. I've spoken to you that the environment doesn't change. There's a division between the wise builder and the foolish builder. So the wise builder decides to build his house on the rock. The foolish builder decides to build his house on the sand. So the wise builder will build it on a rock. The Monastery of St. George of Josiba. Now, sometimes our concept of building the house on the rock is we are looking for a rock and we build the house on the rock. And we think about it as, you know, it's a sandy place, we build a house on the sand. But during those times where the parable was, uh, was mentioned in the Sermon of the Mount, I want to bring to you to this particular place, which is still present. And I'm not sure whether you can notice, but I, I'm very sure in your phone you can actually see. Can you see that all of these houses are actually built into the rock? It was carved out from the rocks on the side. It is not built on the rock. Because when you build on the rock, you still have to face the environment that comes from the top. But they are all built into the rock. So in order to come to this place, to bring anything that you want to bring, you cannot come through here. You have to come from the top on the other side and come down and bring it down. So it will take you a lot of effort, a lot of time, and you don't do it alone because it is nearly impossible to do it alone. And that is what God is saying. God is saying that it's not going to be easy to build a good foundation and you will need help from people and you will need guidance, you need ideas, you need how to build it. Because I, I want to read this to you so that this particular word that I want to bring out, it says here that this guy, a Greek monk by the name of George, therefore you get the name, journeyed down the valley of Wadi Quelt to join this particular monastery. So I want to bring to you this particular word, Wadi. It's because it makes reference to the sandy gullies that is between the rocks. So just imagine, like uh, if I, I ask you to imagine the Grand Canyon. I mean, straight away you can imagine these rocks at the side and the rivers that run in between. But imagine those rivers are dry in the desert. So when it's not raining, whatever is dry is sandy and it's flat. And it's very easy to put in a foundation. You can just put it in it will stay. You can put your tent up, no problem. And because it doesn't rain maybe for three years, you will tell yourself, ah, I don't think it will rain for another three years. Maybe three years after that, it won't rain. Then it will be safe for me to put my house there. But lo and behold, tomorrow it rains. But actually, afternoon it's going to rain. Ah. But it rains. And when it rains, do you think the water will wash away what you built on the rocks? No, it stays there. But the water will run through the path of least resistance. It will run through the lowest and the deepest and the water will wash away every single thing that is in the way. Like I told you before, I saw the tsunami. It washed everything away. And it will wash every single thing away. Any vegetation, anything, it will just be zero on the ground. So the wise man built his house on the rocks. And was it easy? No. He had to go over and above and to knock into the rocks to build a house. But the house will be permanent. It stays there until today. And that one was built during Jesus' time or just before that. Because when this guy went there, it was on the 6th century, 6 AD. So, but it was built way right before that. So the only difference that we can see in this parable will be determined by you. Whether you are wise or whether you are foolish. Because the wise will build it on the rock 
the foolish will build it on the sand. The environment is the same. It covers everybody. So if we depend on Jesus, who is our rock, then that will make the difference. Because it says here, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. My honour and salvation comes from God. He is my mighty rock and my protection. People, trust God all the time. Tell Him all your problems because God is our protection. And I would like to conclude today by reading to you again this verse in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, whoever hears this saying of mine, you have heard it today, and does them, I will liken, liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. So now you have an understanding what the rock is, what the sand is, what a wise builder, what a foolish builder is, and then you decide how you want to build it. Why don't we, we rise and, and uh, ask the musicians to come. We just, we, we just end with this song to just, just worship God. Father, you see us here today before you, Lord. And God, we offer our lives to you once again. Father, you are God of second chance. Whatever has been wrong, you can make it right again. And Father, we look forward from today onwards to be wise, to be wise builders, to build God our house on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. Father, we pray, Lord, that you will teach us, Lord, to recognize the foolish ways, to recognize the sin, and to recognize not to build there, Lord, but Father, to build on the rock which is you. Father, I just thank you for these people here today. And God, I ask that you continue to bless them, Lord. Father, I ask that you pour your blessings on them. You just, you just be with them, Father. You walk with them. You speak to them, Lord. You whisper to them, Lord. Father, as they just speak to you, seek you, Lord. Father, you reveal yourself to them. Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, for your goodness, God, in our lives, Lord. Father, we just want to thank you for a wonderful time today we have. And God, all the people will say, Amen. Thank you, everyone.